Happy New Year, and it's good to be back. Um, first of the year, I missed this thing. I, again, remember Dennis Izaki that started it, land and power, and power and land. Um, I have a guest today that talks even faster than I would like to. Uh, and the segue into that from power and land is that he has a unique perspective of buyers as an auctioneer. He auctions a number of things. And as we all know, you have to kind of, you hit the gavel and then you start um, talking and you don't stop talking until you've cajoled every last cent out of those in the audience who have come to buy. So the buying proposition is of particular interest to me who do, does market research. And then again, has to talk to people about, um, in a sense, politics, why we are where we are, why are uh, price is so high uh, for housing and just about everything else, and it has to do with some economics. Um, we have the highest quality of life, in my opinion, in, in America. Uh, but there's an emotional thing, and um, can't qual I, it's hard for me to quantify uh, emotion, but my guest show typo might well be able to articulate some of the emotion, but even better, he can tell us what he does, what he sees, and what happens. So I'll turn it over to you, Joe. Thank you, Ricky. It's good to be with you. It's good to have known you as a fellow surfer and come on a local for many, many decades now. And yes, it's showtime, and I've brought my gavel. Got gavel will travel now to this online forum at Think Tech. I admired Think Tech for a long time with wonderful bright, articulate people like you and Dr. Akina and Rusty Kamori, Jay Fidel, so many wonderful people, Howard Wig, an old friend. And so thank you for all you do. It's very interesting, the title of your your particular subject matter and be able to work a niche on this Think Tech show with politics and land and Hawaii and how it might tie into me and the auction action world, real estate auctions, probably as a matter of focus, but it's just kind of an interesting coincidence that as a struggling surfer who was only going to UH Manoa as a way station and platform to go surfing, I eventually was forced into declaring a major because I was getting to be a junior. And I said, well, how about political science? And so I happen to have that degree under my belt and have some interest in, in politics. But I will tell you with regard to the subjective, the emotional element you talked about, and I do like to really tell people that there's an art and science to auctioneering. And yeah, thanks for the compliment about fast talking. But if I could talk just as fast as you think, I'd really be all free. That's another story for another day. But anyway, so I will tell you this. What came to mind was, you being a well-read, learned man, you remember what the, our beloved uh, sometimes citizen Mark Twain said back in the 1800s about Hawaii and Hawaiian real estate, the loveliest fleet of islands anchored in any ocean. And like you said today, too, it's still true, and that that creates this demand and an emotional upside factor, doesn't it, to the the cost of living and the cost of real estate here in Hawaii. And that's so there is an emotional, not just an objective aspect to this whole subject of real estate and evaluations, how auctions impact it. But anyway, that's just a little bit of a reaction to some of the things you shared in this matter, the introduction here today. Actually, that's pretty good. It was there's a bunch of writers that, that came out here just loving the place. Yeah, uh, starting way back in in the monarchy, but um, even today, that uh, Michael Crichton lived right up the road, and he just kept buying homes. He had um, a love affair with this place, and and baked it into some of his books. Um, thank you for the compliment of of reading. Uh, your educational background, uh, I did not appreciate until we got to know each other a little bit better. Uh, thanks to James Jones, who we both sponsored to be a member at the Outrigger Canoe Club, and they started sharing war stories. Uh, the one thing about the two of us that we know about surfers is their stories. Uh, but behind the stories is often, you know, a distillation of a trend or a truth or something like that. And I'll go back and, and salute Mark Twain. He called it a long time ago. Um, Back to you, Joe. Well, you know, you know what you're. I'm not saying you're implying it, or but I'm somewhat inferring it. Where this could be going, rather than being contextual, conceptual, 
historical, all that and more might be to the cutting edge of the prominent, uh, talk about market research, Ricky, issue of Hawaii, the, the cost of housing, the cost of affordable housing, the need for it or whatever. One thing I'm going to champion isn't just my profession and the oldest marketing method on the planet, marketing and selling, by the way, is both, right? Marketing and selling the auctioneering. Stock market, that's the biggest auction in the world. It, it's really bringing buyers and sellers together. But the beautiful thing about it, where it could really benefit these these issues, these factors of Hawaii, is that it's not just about getting the highest price for, say, real estate in Hawaii or anything, but it's also to give a fair forum for the buyer to buy something at fair true market value and maybe not anymore. So that if he has that assurance that the marketplace is, is at a certain level and he bids a little bit more in order to secure a property acquisition, he has a sense that he bought somewhat rationally and fair to himself too, you see. That's really what we're trying to create here. Even though you kind of implied some of the, the jocular references about auctions in the past. And occasionally there's a rational exuberance and charity benefit auctions, that kind of thing. But it can be a very equitable, uh, fair transaction with a win-win for buyer and seller, including in real estate, which I think is a good thing because of well, the long bull run that we've just been through that seems to be trending slower and or probably downward. It's going to change things. We could talk about that, how the auction method can help it. But but you you get my point about that is that it's it's not a win lose one sided lopsided benefit. I think that's the reason it's been around so long is because it's the ultimate way, Ricky, to determine the value of anything when you've got a concentrated amount of time and space and people well informed and motivated to buy something and, and determine what something's worth in order to acquire it today. I, I think it's really a very helpful method. So I'm going to extend on that a little bit and go to um, the thought that you engendered, which was, it is indeed all you said, um, and uh, compare that to the normal way of buying real estate homes, uh, which is you go search, uh, you have an agent help you, the agent then goes out and negotiates um, with another agent, and uh you know, it's a back and forth that ends with uh, an agreement when it does. Uh, and then they split 6%. Uh, there's um, a bunch of conditions baked into it in terms of um, not hiding any f uh, relevant facts, that sort of thing. Um, it's an interesting process. It's under attack uh, currently. Uh, yes, and, I know. And... Uh, Europe has like a six percent, not a a, a two percent. Europe has a two percent, not a six percent round trip. Um, in this age of the internet, uh, it might well evolve towards doing more auctions. Uh, and I think uh, you and I have never talked about this, but I know we're, what we're going to talk about next. Yeah. Uh, so, how would you do it? Um, how would you spread? Uh, this methodology. Um, and we have to go back to affordable housing because that, that really is um, the other half of this because a market sets a high price. We've got, or, or put as a market sets a, uh, an accurate price, but here in Hawaii, we have a ton of offshore buyers. Yeah. And that's news. But go back and, and talk whatever you want. I mean, can, can this methodology... Yeah, uh, let me let me comment on some of the things you brought up and distinguish where it is that my come on a local team and our number one in America, national century old or GP King, where we're actually focused to help people the most to benefit from this ancient method that now in the modern era, using both live and internet bidding, marketing and selling, can really help the most. You talked about a bar market that I'll just call let's just call it the average priced home. Prices a little bit below, a little bit above. Things up to maybe a couple of million or so, especially this last very long bull run that seems to be finally, you know, petering out, starting to change. And that we should talk about that in a minute. They're they're fine for the listing method. And of course, we had a little bit of a pent up demand by virtue of scarce supply, which helped pump up the price. But that's really what we do also, paradoxically, with the high end market, high value real estate 
mansions, large land tracts, ranches, that kind of thing. That's really where we focus, by the way, because typically there are comparables. But the auction method of a bunch of pre-qualified cash buyers with no contingencies, by the way, as opposed to the listing method, which has a lot of different restrictions and different you know, issues, let's say. Well, that's going to be very helpful in that niche market because it will help determine the value when a bunch of qualified, well-informed, motivated bidder buyers uh, bid somebody's property up. That's going to be pretty much today what that property's worth in the world. Now, listing can take care of a lot of very ordinary average properties up to a few million. But in the high-end market that we focus on, this auction method can be very, very helpful, if you see what I mean. Well, I, I've lived your thing. I, I've, I've been asked to do market research on the best properties, and it's impossible if the comp set is one or, or none, and that's what you're talking about. Yeah, it, it, it is. So typically, that's our focus. I think the listing method has been very, very successful, obviously, for a long time, with special to obviously ordinary properties. So let's just call that even up to even two or three million here in Hawaii. However, I will tell you that speaking of surfer brands, and his name shall remain anonymous for now, but they told me just last month, and they're uh, head of one of the largest escrow title companies in Hawaii, and they watched the real numbers of transaction close. And yeah. he said literally no uncertain terms that we're not only either in or about to go into a recession, but also a buyer's market. Now, this paradoxically, the other side of that coin, may be where also we could help because we're really a compacted, accelerative system. And not everybody wants to wait for long DOM days on market into the high-end properties. It could be a year or two. What if somebody has a, a life chapter they want to close and would love to be able to cash in their chips and move to the mainland, move to another kind of a property, a retirement home, whatever, but they could do so with the auction method, date specific in about 90 days versus about a year. So there's a benefit, but I really like what you brought up because I did notice that incredible, it was, I don't know if it's exaggerated, you're more the expert in this area than I am, but this, they called it an extinction level um, challenge to, to the, the core 6% National Association of Realtor Commission structure system for cause or not, regardless of whether you agree with it. But did you know in our world, we're, we not only pay courtesy to brokers, but we also, the seller doesn't pay the, the buyer broker fee. So they save that with the auction method because we do on the buyer's premium. So there's a transactional savings with the auction method, as well as getting it done date specific to cash buyers without all the usual contingencies. So I think that with all these changes, like you brought up with the possibly changing commission structure for the listing method, uh, maybe even the courtesy to brokers system and the auction method will provide a more friendly um, joint venturing, shall I say, because we're very friendly with brokers and sellers. So one of the things that this then focuses on is is data and accuracy or, or information or facts yeah. and how in uh, you have a ramp up to the auction and and... Uh, I run around trying to do all my due diligence and get everything, get everything, get everything. Sometimes in a unique property, though, uh, I might find something that um, the seller didn't know about. Now, in that case, the seller should, if he's thoughtful, just say, okay, instead of a 90-day hard close, you know, I'm going to inform everybody and, and add another 30 days so you all can fa factor this into it. And it could be something like finding... Um, not Red Hill type stuff, but something along those lines. Um, but let me go back to information. So if if you're not only going to provide uh, a platform to have a transaction, that platform probably has to extend into all sorts of information. Probably has to be vetted by lawyers uh, and and accountants. Um, so in terms of of the way realtors have kind of evolved. They become a very powerful um, political lobbying group, and they're very protective of um, of a number of things. They're protecting protective of their members. They're protective of their rights, and um, and the commission indeed is is something that they protect and they should out of self interest. But um, just because it's that way doesn't mean it's always that way. Um, if you were to go into this space. Um, 
would you what would you want to accommodate and what would you want to achieve? Well, the main thing is to remember the difference, not just the friendliness or compatibility of the auction, the real estate auction marketing method and selling method with the traditional brokerage because they are compatible. And we really don't have a lot of strong opinions or aversions or conflicts of interest. We're we're very friendly. We're very win win and rather would team rather than compete. We're just that that's our kind of our philosophy and the nature of it. So the auction itself, it brings something unique in that it conveys and signals urgency, desirous sellers, selling desirable assets, seeking desirous buyers and suitors for this property because they make a great marriage. You know, the, the, the desirous buyers respond to a motivated, decisive seller. And the big difference, Ricky, is that, and it's not a negative, it's just a contrast with the listing method. It might take a long time. You don't know if or whenever, for whatever, you're going to sell it. But especially with a high property, especially with going to a recession, the tendency is going to be that the market's going to start bidding it down. We do the reverse. We start low, attract enormous interest, and then get everybody to push it up. So it's a directional change, right? And it's, it's exciting. I mean, it's not too exciting seeing things going down, except if you're shopping and you want to save money at a expensive store or something like that. So I think that's going to be one of the keys is that we're going to be having properties spit up and selling faster. Now, you talked about all the facts and figures and the due diligence. I think you're going to like this too. Look at the words act proactive and reactive. So even with the best of the MLS system, and it's a great system, probably better than it's ever been, it's still a little bit passive reactive to people's interests. Again, if ever, whenever, for whatever. And so there's this idea of due diligence kind of underway and maybe later and maybe an escrow and all that kind of stuff. In the auction method, we turn it on its head. We do the opposite. We front load all the due diligence in the front load so that people come into it feeling very motivated and excited because they're extremely well informed. However, they only sign in saying they're they're sticking to their bid no matter what because it's contingency free. Obviously, unless it's fraud. That's a lot of the story. So this creates excitement, right? Because one bidder may have strong interest compared to another one relative to the amount of information they have. It's not necessary to be the high bidder to know 99.9% .9 of everything. They they want it for a lot of reasons, right? Does that make sense? So it's a little bit different that way. Yeah, that 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 actually goes to where I, I've been trying to get to in a sense mentally, which is, um, is that subjective part? And, and I was going to segue into it by saying, okay, um, a regular transaction, it, it's over the phone. Sometimes it's in person. An auction, okay, it, it it's in person. It can be over the phone. I mean, like the art houses, blah, blah, blah. But that um, that moment to moment, your urgency um, really pushes, I would say, um, you know, emotions and, and logic because you, you have to set a limit or you have to to the front and is when you do a um is there a, you want to talk about live auctions or telephone auctions or zoom auctions for a sec just in terms of the subjective right I, I will and i'll give you a little bit of history i think you'll you'll enjoy this part of the conversation too ricky too in terms of the history because it's relevant it segues right into your question of the condition of the marketplace now where we use online a lot and, and live online combos in marketing and selling but I not only began live real estate auctions back in the late 90s during that recession where there was no internet marketing and no internet bidding or selling, but I did a lot of research and found the touch points dating all the way back to when everything had to be live and you had to show up in person, you know, just papers and, you know, that kind of thing in a PA system. And I'm, I'm thinking about at Waikiki on the big island, I'm thinking about Molokai. These were all very successful real estate auctions. But what a lot of people don't know is, for example, and this is, has not to do with high end property, which is our focus, but just to show you the power of the auction method. When, if you remember the early 70s, when the Dell Webb screwed in with condominiums, they couldn't give them away to save their life. They solved that with the auction method. And a lot of people don't know they had a thousand people turn out for that auction. And it really got the interest because of the auction work. This, Hey, they're going to sell. We got to get part of it. We got to compete. We got to get one, right? Before they're gone or whatever. So, and it worked really well. But now fast forward, we do a combination of in-person, 
combined with internet bidding, combined with, like you said, they do Sotheby's for R2 with phones, people on phones. Some people want to be anonymous. That's where the beautiful online bidding is cool, too, because you don't get to see who's the audience, right? So some people want to be seen. Some people want to be there and kick the tires and be present. They love that live environment. And some people might want to be anonymous, and they can be with our method of using live and online bidding or by the phone, right? So it, it's a beautiful uh, system that just, again, makes for more decisive conditions. But you're you're right. You're kind of alluding to that there's a potential capture of an upside. You remember uh, Alan Greenspan talking about an auction during the dot-com before it became the dot-bomb era? Talked about irrational exuberance in the marketplace. <laughs> so, so we do want to generate that, obviously, for the seller. But where we're fair to the buyer is that, hey, you know what? If it's too crazy, just stop bidding. You see where the market is. If that's if it's too rich for your blood, you stop. Let somebody else pay the right price or overpay. That's really up to them, right? But it's a very fair, transparent system. That's what we like to say. I well, I well remember um, irrational exuberance, but I have another phrase you'll like, which is wisdom of crowds. The wisdom of crowds was one of the better books on, on market research. And yeah. uh, it, it, you obviously know that if you get enough people looking at something and then you run out and ask them something, if you collect all their answers, they pretty much hit the mark. And the the, the model was um, the livestock shows in England in, in the 1800s asking the onlookers how much that cow weighed. And there is a wisdom to clouds that you can appreciate and I can too. Um, now, on uh, that the Dell Web story is it, 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 what is what sparked it. Um, the let's flip it around and 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 start stargazing because uh, the other market where you have just a ton of people in it has to be affordable housing, both for sale yes. and for rent. And the lower people's incomes, the bigger the market. Uh, and then. I do a lot of stats. I do maybe six to eight affordable housing studies a year, and and that's just, that that's Hawaii. Okay, so if there was a way of 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 somehow getting people, and and I'm stretching. I got to stretch. I mean, part of the stretch is that I want the problem solved. I'm looking for the best way of, of solving it. The way it is 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 run historically is that um, the supply has been so bad that the demand has increased, and finally the the, the cries of hurt uh, by those without shelter, the demand uh, has gotten so bad that that um, the regulatory process on housing has shifted from being onerous to liberalizing, at least on the side of of affordable housing. So mm -hmm. I don't know where I started. I don't know where I went. I think I ranted. But um, there is there, there's a large group of people, and the internet is entirely um, appropriate for aggregating a market uh, like that. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know how we'll, we'll we'll make it work other than democracy and, and elections. But um, it, it just it, the history of social media has, has been okay. Now we're connected. What do we do with it? There's a downside to um, social media in that it, it 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 can turn into look look at me moments and then allow people to rant away and ratchet up the rant till to to get attention to themselves. Um, an auction is the opposite. It, it's not it, it it may be a free for all in terms of values, but it is it it it, it has a narrow focus with with a goal that 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 gets reached. And um, and that's very satisfying to people. You know that as being a shopper as well as a, a buyer. Huh? Yeah, it's 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 really a just a again it's a beautiful method of really connecting buyers and sellers in a very friendly, transparent, and uh, rapid method. And just on average, people would like to get things done more decisively and get them done. Period versus not, and done a little bit faster rather than slower. So we offer a lot and. Yeah, you brought up a great issue. It's it's not one that I, I don't have any answers for it right now. I we pretty much have to stick to the niche that we're most efficacious with. And I will say that although we're talking primarily about landed politics and real estate auctions in Hawaii, that 
People can find me on the net at surferjoetheauctioneer.com. And although I'm a comprehensive auctioneer that, by the way, I'm not a lone wolf, I team with all kinds of great local and national partnerships in all of my niches, from estates to charities to surplus equipment. If anybody has any question uh, about any aspect of this enormous uh, niche world, nonetheless, here and around the world, I'm glad to answer questions. But I think that, again, I think that our timing can be good to help a lot of sellers right now to capture a lot of the um, a lot of the equity that they patiently and painstakingly have been paying mortgages on for many, many years now to capture that gain before what some people think is going to be a, maybe a significant slowdown or downturn, right? And they're sitting out a lot of those gains, but it might be better to capture it now and sooner rather than if ever later and slower. So the auction method could come into bear. I must tell you that uh, we're excited having established our local team with a veteran broker and a, uh, one of their agents, the National J.P. King uh, National Partnership. We're getting ready to announce in the upcoming uh, months some people that are looking to come aboard with the method. And one of them, ironically, is a large land tract, multiple parcels that really could be brought to uh, affordably help a lot of uh, ag farmers, you know, that kind of thing. So there, there could be a social, uh, sustainable effect on that particular sale. But other ones we're looking at is uh, large ranches, which have a real hard time uh, selling here in Hawaii, and not just a few mansions. And some are a couple of very large nonprofits that have some surplus land that could use for creating affordable housing, where right now they're just uh, unused property. So this could all come about, and we'll be glad to inform um, people as time moves forward about those exciting facilities, Ricky. Do, do good on that because the next uh, reservoir or res, uh, of, of of land that you could develop uh, sits in the public sector, and they're very bad about uh, making the the um, transition from, for instance, sometimes schools. They could use housing on them. Okay, they're not going to build it. Get a developer. There's all sorts of other public lands that that. You can see as you drive around, don't look really beautiful because they're unloved and unwanted. So if you can uh, have a, a system, uh, that the other thing with the, the public thing is that it has to be transparent and it has to be realistic. So, you know, I'll keep on um, banging the drum and and pushing you towards that way. But I'll, 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 I'll let you, g- you. Gavel, the, gavel, gavel the conversation and we'll say aloha. It's been a great showtime with you, Ricky Cassidy. I'm Surfer Joe. Meeting adjourned. Sold your way. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you.